Hi guys this is Hirasaki. This story is all about what if Naruto was a player of League of Legends. Meet Naruto Uzumaki, a not-so-regular teen with a passion for the MOBA game League of Legends even though he sucked at it. His life was normal until he was introduced to the supernatural world and found out he had an irregular sacred gear. So, the problem? How should he fend off a mono Yuma? With Lucian's relic pistols? There are so many choices. Before we start kindly like and subscribe to this channel, and look over the description box for the author of this amazing storyline. Welcome aboard. Chapter 14 Asona-san, you really don't need to do the laundry. Just leave your clothes on the counter, and I will take care of them for you later. Graphia said dutifully to Sona, who walked into the laundry room with a basket of dirty clothes. Hearing her name being called, Sona turned her head to look at Graphia and smiled at the silver-haired maid, putting the basket of clothes down on the washing machine to take out from her skirt pocket a small notebook and a pen, which she used to write down her answer, and showed it to Graphia as the maid waited patiently for her to finish, it's no problem at all Graphia. I just thought since I had a moment, I would lend you a hand. Since Graphia and the whole house had just started learning sign languages to communicate with Sona, for the time being that notebook was the only way for the maven to converse with them, with the exception of course being Naruto since he could hear her voice with the telepathic link of summoners and champions. Let's do it together then. Graphia replied to Sona with a small smile, and went to show the maven how to operate a washing machine. Graphia had learned from the first day that there was no point in arguing with this girl, since she could be just as stubborn as the young heiress of the Gremory Devil household, but at the same time having the wit, the experience and the sharp tongue to back herself up. Here's Sona-san, you press this button too. But then she felt it, a dark and evil, menacing, but very familiar feeling. Stay here, Sona-san. Without those firm words to Sona, who could only look at her in confusion, Graphia swiftly made her way out of the laundry room, and then saw Asia running down the stairs. Asia-san, where? Before she could finish, Asia interrupted her, speaking up in a hurry Graphia san hurry. We need your help. The silver-haired maid did not need to ask another question, and quickly followed the former nun to Naruto's bedroom. The door was left open, so upon arriving Graphia could instantly see Naruto Uzumaki standing in the middle of the room in front of the other members of the occult research club, Rias and her peerage, with darkness like mist coming from his whole body making his glowing yellow eyes stand out even more. At the rate the darkness was being unleashed, it wouldn't take it long for his whole room to be engulfed in total darkness. While the, while the sight of a seemingly possessed Naruto was alarming enough for Graphia, she did notice that no one of Rias' peerage had their guards on, including the heiress herself. Akino Haimajima still had a small smile on her face as she exchanged a few words with Naruto, who did not look threatening, but annoyed, as he stood there with his arm crossing on his chest, his right foot tapping impatiently on the floor. Riaso Jusama. Graphia addressed as she entered the room and turned Rias' attention to her, choosing to remain cautious what happened? That's what we are trying to figure out, Graphia. Naruto's been like this since the meeting with the exorcists. Rias answered as she looked at Naruto. Graphia knew what she was talking about, having been informed about Zenovia and Irina's arrival earlier that morning before Rias and the others left for school. She was also the one who had decided that it would be best for both Sona and Rias to meet them together. It appears that he's unconsciously drawing on Evelyn's power, but without being influenced by her personality. I see, so you're still yourself then, Naruto-sama? Yeah, but I have no idea how to stop doing this, whatever this is. Like, when I merge with Ari for example, I know exactly what I need to do to use her foxfires, but since I am not merging with Evelyn, I don't know how to use her power. You get the idea. The blonde rolled his eyes while looking at Graphia, who nodded her head in understanding, growing more and more frustrated by the seconds I have tried everything but nothing worked, even Professor Hymer's inventions. Do you have any suggestions for me? Well, if all 30 parties' methods have failed then I would recommend that you find a solution from the source of the problem itself. The maid answered calmly as she walked closer to the blonde, but in this case, it would mean you would have to. Ask Evelyn. 
Naruto finished Grafia's sentence, and the maid nodded her head to him, hearing a giggle in the back of his head that made him scoff mentally in response, yeah, already did that. She found it amusing to see me struggling like this. He finished, pointing a finger at his head to emphasize his point. Have you tried to do so directly? Grafia suggested, making Naruto widen his eyes maybe she will tell you if you ask her face to face, and even if she won't, we can always make her do it by force. As much as I don't want to force my champions to do anything against their wills, I think I don't have another choice in this situation. Naruto said while scratching the back of his head. He had promised himself from the first day that he would always ask for his champions' consents before doing anything with them, summoning them for example, even though his powers allowed him to summon or merge with anyone at any time he wanted, regardless of whether or not they were truly free or willing to do it, regardless of who they were. So um, you sure we can do it? Evelyn is a 15,000-year-old ancient demon. Don't you know it's rude to talk about a woman's age? And I am still learning the power balancing runes, so when I summon her, she will be at full power, you know. Naruto said, ignoring Evelyn's voice. I will help you, Naruto-sama. Don't worry Grafia told him firmly and Naruto couldn't help but feel a sense of assurance. The silver-haired maid then turned her attention over to Rias and the others, and told them with a firm tone of Jusama, can I trust you and Akino-san to set up a, a barrier around this room to make sure that Evelyn can't escape? Rias looked like she wanted to argue, wanting to stay with her beloved pawn, but after hearing Grafia's tone, it appeared that she didn't have another choice yet, you can. Good luck Naruto. After that, she and everyone walked out of the room, with Yumi staying with Kaneko as usual. The door was then slammed shut, and after a moment Naruto could see a wave of crimson energy running on the walls of his room, forming a barrier. All right, let's do it, Naruto-sama. Grafia nodded her head to him, as a silver magic circle appeared underneath her. In a flash, Grafia was no longer wearing her maid outfit, but an outfit consisted of a black shirt with golden caramel accents at the edges, spreading horizontally near the bottom with two light golden trims going down and split slightly above her stomach, exposing her midriff. Around her neck and shoulders was a long, cyan scarf made from light material that reached her hips. Her jeans were blue, with a white outline at the top. Her hair was also done differently, retaining the braids, but the back hair was done in a ponytail with another braid going around it, keeping the ponytail in place. Here we go. Naruto nodded his head. Sensing that Grafia was prepared for a battle, he wisely did the same, summoning a number of weapons to prepare for the Demonus' arrival before lowering himself down to the floor and activating his summoning power. Before he summoned her to his world, he heard her laughter, and wondered if he had made a terrible mistake. In a, fl a flash of light, Forcing the shadow he had emitted back, Evelyn appeared before them, taking the shape of a woman with pale skin and short white hair. She seemed to be of average height and weight, yet possessed an exceptionally large chest and a curvaceous hourglass figure. Her body was almost entirely exposed with how little her clothes were, with the only things that looked significantly were her thighs high stockings. The rest, however, were just little pieces of clothing they left literally nothing to the imagination. Her most noticeable features, however, were a pair of long lasher with a sharp and glowing blade tips that came out from the back of her neck. Ah, finally! The demon of agony said in self-satisfaction as she raised her arms above her head and stretched her back, making her delicious curves move erotically before Naruto as he stood up and activated the gauntlet of Nazuk that had manifested on his left arm. Before he could say anything to her, however, Evelyn snapped her head around abruptly to look at him, a seductive, but evil smirk on her face as the shadow in the room intensified, swallowing everything in total darkness to the point that even with Devil's vision it was almost impossible for Naruto and Grafia to see anything outside of the light emitting from the energy bow coming from Naruto's mythical gauntlet. It's better in the dark, isn't it? Look Evelyn, I don't want any trouble. Naruto said as he stood back to back with Grafia, scanning their surroundings while trying to pinpoint Evelyn's location from her footsteps, which only lasted for about two seconds before completely disappearing. I just want you to help me stop using your power. You want it to, don't you? Ah, that's where you are wrong, honey. I want you to keep using my power. 
He heard her sweet voice next to him before feeling something caressing his crotch, which turned out to be one of Evelyn's lasher. Grafia reacted even faster than he could, summoning an ice blade and slashing it down, forcing Evelyn to take on the form of Demon sh Shade, her demonic form that was wrapped in shadow oh my, what a scary lady. Evelyn giggled, but her tone had become less playful than before. We can do this the easy way, or the hard way, Evelyn. Grafia spoke up loudly as Naruto fired a true shot arrow from his gauntlet after taking a wild guess of her location, lighting up an area of the room and catching the menacingly smiling face of Evelyn, making him shudder and feel a cold chill running down his spine your choice. Is it wrong for me to say that I want it stiff, hard, and rough? The easy way is always so boring anyway. Evelyn giggled in response now, or was I oh, look what I found in your pants. With that said, Naruto and Grafia heard something sliding on the floor toward them, and looked down to see the broken pieces of a very familiar device, the very headpiece that Heimerdinger had made for him to prevent Naruto from being influenced by his champion's powers whenever he merged with them. Wanna know why I want you to keep using my power? Because it allows me to do this. Naruto widened his eyes in realization, before he felt a surge of power that rushed through his whole body, causing the shadow that was continuously leaking from his body intensify. As Naruto bent over while clutching his face, a pair of lashers similar to that of Evelyn shot out from, from the back of his neck, forcing a surprised Grafia to take several steps back in caution. Naruto-sama. Grafia called out to him, but she did not take even the smallest step forward. She had realized what Evelyn meant when she said she wanted him to continue using her power, because it would allow her to use it to influence him and twist his personality just like the first time they met. Refreshing, isn't it? Evelyn said as she walked toward him, her hips swaying seductively as her lashers snuck around Naruto. It is easier to... But before she could finish, Naruto shot up and grabbed her by the lower half of her face, effectively shutting her mouth up. As her hand came up to grab his arm, trying to shrink the her talons into his flesh only to find it being shielded under an energy shield coming from the bracelet that appeared around his wrist, her lashers instinctively lashed out to slash him with the speed of striking vipers, but Naruto used his own to counter them hitting them expertly underneath their bladed heads before they were forced into his other hands as he held them tightly and pushed her back until he could slam her against the wall of his room, causing the shadow around them to disperse somewhat. Wah. Wah. The agony's embrace could only utter in shock before she finally noticed Naruto's appearance as he smirked up at her. Trick ya. He said, smirking from ear to ear as he gripped her lashers tightly preventing them from lashing at him again. His blonde hair, which had been spiky before, had grown even longer and wilder, now sporting red streaks in it. He now also wore a pair of red and blue goggles on the top of his head, with a third lens hovering above his forehead, and had a utility belt worn around his waist. There was only one other individual who had the same appearance and also hairstyle. Heimer Dinger, the revered inventor. Surprised? Naruto smirked, speaking in a thick German accent similar to the Yordle inventor. He then raised his hand and waved, constructing numerous small components from thin air, and then putting them together to form a pair of handcuffs-like devices, which he then sent out, taking Evelyn's lashers with them and pinning the appendages against the wall beside her. I knew from the moment I unconsciously reopened the connection between us by drawing on a portion of your power you would try to mess with my head again, so after I summoned you I contacted Professor Heimerdinger and asked him if we could merge so I could gain his power, intelligent and genius mind, which I believed should be strong enough to withstand even your power. It was a gamble, but I'm glad that I was correct. Even Grafia was surprised by it, but the moment she fully understood what had just happened, she couldn't stop herself from looking at the blonde in mild amazement. He then raised his now free hand, which had been continuously leaking shadow just like the rest of his body even after he had merged with Heimer, and continued now, tell me how to stop this. My, if you have fused with the greatest mind of Runeterra, then why don't you try and think of a solution? Evelyn asked huskily as she writhed her body in a sensual manner, obviously getting turned on. It was obvious, obvious that she was enjoying having her neck squeezed and being pinned against the wall, 
a position that was no doubt very familiar to her, for as strong as Evelyn was being one of the first creations of horror, in order to catch her prey she would even tailor her own flesh to her prey's liking, learn to say what they wanted to hear, and to walk in a manner they found alluring, and do whatever that suited their fetish so that she could catch them, and then torture them to death with. Unimaginable pain afterwards. Even now, pinning her against a wall, Naruto knew for a fact that she could break away oh so easily. She was being pinned on her own free will, and that was a fact he did not need Heimerdinger's brilliant mind to understand. What do you want Evelyn? He then asked her what do I need to give you in return for your answer to this problem? First, I am not that overgrown catfish who calls himself Tom Kench and swims around striking deals with mortals. Evelyn began absent-mindedly in second, why should I help you with this little problem when it is so fun for me to watch? Naruto clicked his tongue in annoyance and then raised his other hand behind him, constructing a massive H-28Q apex turret, armed with 16 Hextech rockets and over a dozen of CH-3X lightning grenades, all of which were aimed directly at Evelyn, who looked at the turret and its weaponry blankly for a second before busting out in awkward laughter all right, all right. I get it. You're dead serious. Let's make a deal then. What is your term? What do you want? Hum, let's see. What I want from a fine, young but strong male specimen like you, is a night of hot, steamy hardcore sex, where we both can try fucking each other to death. Naruto felt his eyebrow twitch at that. It was obvious that Evelyn did not take this matter as seriously as he was you don't like the idea? Must be because you are a virgin. I found it surprising, with how many beautiful ladies around you, that made for example. The demoness continued, tapping her chin in a thoughtful manner since it will be your first time, maybe I will let you take charge and see if you can fuck me too. Enough Evelyn, be serious. He interrupted her, speaking up in a stronger, a stronger tone than before. Fine fine. Evelyn said, letting out a sigh of disappointment, but the smile never really left her face it has come to my knowledge that you are opening a charitable house for homeless champions. Since I am homeless myself, how about you take me in and give me a room to stay here? You can't be serious. Naruto said in disbelief no way I'm gonna set you in this world. Ah, but I promise I will behave. You can always put a leash on me to make sure that I won't cross over the line, and even if I do, my ass is always up for a spanking or fucking, your choice. To further emphasize her point, and to clear his assumption that she was letting him pin her against the wall, Evelyn wrapped her body in shadow for a brief second before dispersing it to emerge facing away from him, while having his hand at the back of her head, her back arching to stick her ass up toward him, giving him a clear view of everything that she had previous hid under a layer of shadow clothing. Naruto had to admit, it was actually kinda hot. Ah, you like the idea, don't you? I might be the demon of agony, but I can smell arousal coming from you, Han. You are a man after all. No point in hiding it from me. Evelyn said in satisfaction, as she cranked her back to smile at him, her tongue sticking out to lick her lips seductively before she reached around with one hand and grabbed her left buttock, kneading it for a second before pulling it to the side to show him what she had waiting for him between those cheeks give it a try if you want to know how much more fun it will be for you with me around. around. Keep a clear mind, my young apprentice. Do not let her influence you with her sweet voice. Okay, I think I have had enough of this. Naruto snapped suddenly, pushing Evelyn's face even harder against the wall with a firm grip on the back of her head. Naruto could feel himself slowly losing control, with Heimerdinger telling him to not give in to her at the back of his head, but any more of that, and he felt he might just as well drop his pants and do exactly what she wanted him to do. Are you going to help me or not? He asked. Yes, but only if you promise you will let me stay here in your world. Evelyn answered and then continued when she saw how he remained silent come on, what is so bad about it? I promised I would behave, didn't I? You know that I can't just trust you, right? The blonde shook his head and said firmly what will stop you from harming my friends or hurting my parents. You are the demon of agony, Evelyn, there's no end to your wanton desire for your victim's pain and suffering. You are correct, but it's not like I can't live a few decades without torturing a poor soul. How about this, you let me play with your enemies. 
Naruto raised an eyebrow at that that little cat called Yumi has been bragging to us all about how she accompanied you to battles, so I figure sooner or later you will meet someone who you will hate so much that you want them to suffer a fate worse than deaths. Let me play with them, and I promise you that they will get what they deserve. How can you be so sure there will be someone like that? Oh, there will be. Whether you like it or not, it is something you cannot avoid living a life like yours. She then glanced over to Grafia, who had remained silent the whole time, asked the scary maid over there. She might not look like that, but I can see it in her eyes. She now lives a peaceful life, but she has fought difficult battles in the past, killed those she hated and knows very well soon she will have to do the same thing, isn't that right? I do not answer to you, demon. Was Grafia's simple reply. Whatever. So, what do you say, summoner? Evelyn then turned her attention back to Naruto and asked him will you allow me to live with you? I promise, once again, that I will behave. I will even do the housework and teach you how to use my power later, since I'd rather not merge with you, thank you. Now that was something he would like to hear. With Heimerdinger's genius mind, he had already thought of over 200 combat situations that Evelyn's camouflage ability would be extremely useful. Since he had tried and found out that he could only merge with one champion at a time, being able to use another power like that of Evelyn alongside them would give him an even greater advantage in battle. What about the League? Oh, believe it or not, those summoners would be more than happy to get rid of me. Evelyn just shrugged sure, I will still need to answer to their summons whenever I'm needed on the fields of justice, but outside of those battles it would be one less demon for them to worry about, though I am not as troublesome as the like of Fiddlestick. I see. Grafia san what do you think? Naruto looked at the maid standing behind him, seeking her advice. As much as I want you to send her right back to whatever hole that she crawled out from, Naruto-sama, I don't think you will have another choice in this matter. Let her stay. The silk. Silver-haired maid then turned to look at Evelyn with sharp eyes, as a powerful aura that matched the color of her hair flared powerfully around her, causing the temperature in the room to drop significantly, to the point that ice began to form all around her. Even Naruto, the one who wasn't being targeted by her overwhelming power, couldn't stop himself from shivering, and it wasn't because of the cold. But I promise you, demon, that if you even try to touch a strand of hair of Ryoso Jusama, or hurt the people who live in this house, then there is nowhere in this world or yours that will save you from me. I will make sure that the pain that you like so much becomes the very thing that you will despite as you experience it for the rest of your life. Ooh, scary. Evelyn just giggled, but even Naruto could tell that she was somewhat affected by Grafia's threat because of the lack of playfulness. So what shall it be, summoner? What is your decision? Professor, what do you think? I think the choice in this matter is well obvious, my young apprentice, but do be careful with her around. She's not known for her treachery, yes, but she's still an ancient evil, one that you should not take lightly. I know, Professor. Naruto nodded his head mentally and replied to the Yordle inventor. All right, Evelyn, my answer is... Break. In the end, the answer to his problem with Evelyn's power was quite simple and obvious. All that he had had to do was allow Evelyn to take back what was hers and shut down the connection between them on her end to stop him from continuously draining her power. It appeared that it would have to stay that way until he had learned to fully control her power or know exactly how his sacred gear worked. This will, this will be your room, Evelyn. Naruto said as he held the door open for Agony's embrace, allowing her to walk in while looking around with one hand on her hip, Grafia-san will put some seals on your room to make sure that you are not sneaking out without us knowing, and if you want to go anywhere, you have to inform Grafia-san first, her room is right next to yours. Sound like she's my jailer or something. Lovely. The demoness said as she jumped on her bed and rested her face on a pillow and you, honey, if you are bored with those young ladies, you know where to find me. Naruto just rolled his eyes. And please, try to keep it to yourself if you find something interesting to do here at night. As Evelyn turned around and winked at him, hands squeezing her breast, the blonde slammed the door shut and nodded his head to Grafia, allowing her to cast the seals on the door. I still don't think it's a good idea letting her stay here with us. 
Rhea spoke with her arms crossing under her breasts. She was currently standing with Asia and Sona, Yumi had returned to Runeterra after the whole ordeal had come to an end, the latter of whom had been told everything that had happened. It appeared that her magic was strong enough to restrain Evelyn, so if something happened and Evelyn decided to be the demon of agony that she was, Sona could always help them deal with her. Naruto just gave his master a shrug of his shoulder, I really don't have a choice, there's a chance that if she reopens our connection, I will start unconsciously drawing on her power again. We will need to let her stay until I know how to fully control her powers, or know exactly how my scared gear works and what it can do. Let's hope that she will keep her words then. Naruto nodded his head at Rhea's statement before looking back at Grafia after she had lowered her hands. Is it done, Grafia-san? Yes. Yes, it's done Naruto-sama. She won't be able to leave this room without me knowing. Grafia nodded her head and gave them a small smile. You three should go back to your rooms and get some rest. You all has had a long day. Yeah. Naruto nodded his head as he stretched his arms. Man, I'm tired. Good night, Naruto. Night, Sona. Naruto grinned at Sona, who then left to her room. Naruto then made his way back to his room on the second floor with Asia and Rias, whose rooms were right next to his with it being in the middle. Before his crimson-haired master could go into her room, however, Naruto suddenly tapped her lightly on the shoulder and asked her something he had been wondering since the meeting with Zenobia and Irina, the two exorcists who had come to the town to retrieve the stolen Excalibur's Bucho, can I ask you something? It's about Kiba. I see. So, you noticed how he acted during the meeting, didn't you? Rias let out a sigh and said. Naruto's problem with Evelyn and her power had almost made her forget about Kiba let's go into your room, Naruto. You two Asia, I believe there's something you two need to know. The two looked at each other before nodding their heads and following, following Rias to Naruto's bedroom, which had been returned to its former state by Grafia. As his master took a seat on his bed, Naruto and Asia sat down on the floor in front of her. Once they had gotten comfortable, she then began by asking the former nun a question. Tell me Asia, have you ever heard of the Excalibur Project? The Holy Sword Project? Asia made a thoughtful face before shaking her head as Naruto leaned forward in interest. No I haven't heard of anything like it Bucho-san. Why do you ask? I'm not surprised, since you are considered the Holy Maiden. Something like that would be kept a secret from you. You see, Naruto, Asia, Yuto is a survivor of that project. Both Naruto and Asia widened their eyes at that, and Rias just let out a small sigh as she continued there was a project several years ago inside the Christian church that aimed to make those who can wield the holy sword Excalibur. Holy swords choose their wielders and I hear that only one person in a decade or so gets chosen to be its wielder, or their wielders, considering the fact that Excalibur is numerous swords now. Anyway, there was this organization that tried to create individuals that could freely use holy swords, and Yuta was among them. He received an artificial treatment at a young age to adapt to those weapons, and to Excalibur in particular. So, can Kiba use a holy sword? Rhea shook her head at his question. Yuto couldn't adapt to the holy sword. Not only him, but it seemed that everyone who received a similar treatment to Yuto also could not, and they were treated as defective products and discarded them. W what? Asia asked with a shocked expression on his face, and Naruto could only reach out and squeeze her hand comfortingly, though it didn't stop her eyes from welling up in tears. It seemed the thing that she believed and had once again betrayed her. Most people in the experiment were killed, including Yuto. Just because they couldn't adapt to those holy swords. No matter how you look at it, it was not an acceptable act even by those who served God. Rias continued with sad eyes. When I reincarnated Yuto into a devil, he was swearing for his revenge, even when he trained to a critical situation. Because his talents had been used for holy swords since he was born, I wanted him to use those talents as a devil, but in the end, it seemed he couldn't forget of the holy swords, of those who were involved with the holy swords, and of those who came from the church. Rias then took a deep breath before continuing, anyway, we should watch out for him from now. 
Right now, it seems like he can't think of anything but holy swords and Excalibur after seeing those two girls showing their weapons to us. He wants revenge, that for sure, but how he chooses to do it is the problem. We cannot let him cross any lines and break the rules that will lead him to go down a dark path, or worse. Naruto nodded, fully understanding what his master meant by that. Anyway, I think it's time we go to bed. Yeah, let's. Before Naruto could say a word to his master in return, the crimson-haired princess suddenly, and rather casually, started taking her clothes off, making him back away from her a little with his eyes widening as wide as dinner plates in surprise boo. Bucho. Why are you taking your clothes off? Rias just stuck out her tongue cutely at him as she removed the second button of her shirt, showing off a fair amount of her cleavage already with how large her breasts were well you see Naruto, I can't sleep without being naked. The blonde, the blonde could make a confused face, before he asked, continuing to look for a way to reason with her so why are you taking them out in my room? But even after that, she didn't stop and continued to take her clothes off until the only thing left on her amazing body was her lace panties. Her naked breasts bounced in front of his eyes after she had taken her bra off. Well, that's because I'm going to sleep with you. Rias answered as if it was an obvious thing to tell him as she stood up and started taking off the last piece of undergarment as well, making his face go beet red, after Evelyn's sexual teasing and the obvious fact that Rias was an incredibly beautiful and attractive young woman, the young summoner of the League could barely control himself, mainly his erection. Asia, who looked as if she had had enough, stood up abruptly with both hands in the air, then I will sleep here too. I'm also going to sleep with Naruto-san. Hey! Just wait a second, Asia. Naruto reasoned while waving his hand around, trying to stop Asia, as she began to take her pajama off you can't do that too. You must not copy her. Bucho. You are a bad influence for Asia, and please put your clothes on as well. Hearing him said that, she stopped removing her clothes, but the same couldn't be said about Rias, who stood there and frowned at his words. Bad influence? That's a harsh thing to say Naruto Rias said as she crossed her arms under her chest, making them look even larger and all the more noticeable before turning over to Asia, asking her in a firm tone can you back off for tonight, Asia? It's going to be our first night sleeping together, you know. No, I don't want to. I think I have a right to be spoiled by Naruto-san too. The two then looked intensively at each other for a moment before they both tur turned to look at Naruto, who was still sitting on the floor with a confused look on his face, asking him at the same time. Then let's make Naruto slash Naruto-san decide. Rias looked directly at him, her eyes clearly telling him to choose her. Beside her, Asia had tears in her eyes, making him feel like surrendering to her because this was clearly not an act. First Zenobia and Irina and their stolen Excalibur situation, then Evelyn, and now this. What a day it had been. Chapter 15 For 95 For 96 Concentrate, Summoner For 97 Concentrate For 98 Focus on your center said a tall and muscular man wearing a dark-colored sleeveless ninja garb, consisting of an armor-like bodysuit, tabi boots, a face mask that left only his eyes visible, pauldrons protecting his shoulders, and a pair of metal forearm guards, as he walked around Naruto with his arms folded slightly under the two swords that he wore on his back. It was early in the morning, and Naruto Uzumaki was at the last of his morning routine, waking up long before anyone in the house did, maybe not Grafia, but he didn't come to her room to ask if she was awake, so he could do some light training for a little bit before the day started. Currently, Naruto was training under the teaching of Shun, the Eye of Twilight, and the current leader of the Kinku, an ancient order who dedicated themselves in preserving a balance between the physical world and the spirit realm in Ionia of Runeterra, without showing a preference for either. Currently, Shun was having Naruto do the last of his usual esoteric morning exercises, performing the handstand push-up in the most unorthodox manner possible by having him balancing on a wooden board that was placed on a round metal ball, which would roll over and cause him to fall if he lost his concentration for even a millisecond. To make it even more difficult and to help him hone his physical strength, Naruto also had several pounds of weight strapped to each of his legs. For 99. 
500. Very good. That's the last of it. You can stop now. With that said, Naruto bent his arms, and then pushed his body into the air. Air. Doing a flip in midair before landing on one knee on the floor before his master, with one hand on the ground to steady himself. Gotta admit, sensei, that was tough as hell. Naruto said to his teacher as he stood up and did some basic stretches for his arms, loosening the joints of his shoulder a minute longer and my arms would have given out. The eye of twilight nodded his head and spoke in his normally calm tone yes, but for someone who has only started training in the way of the kinko for only a few weeks, you are already doing so much better than some of the more gifted disciples of the order. You have no natural talents, but you are disciplined and your will is strong. A good warrior only needs so much to become great, so do not let your struggle sway you from the path you have chosen. I know, Master Shin, and thank you. The blonde smiled, lowering his head to his ninja master in a respectful manner. I believe that's enough of my training for you today. Shin then said it's time for me to take my leave and return to the Kinku Summoner. Remember to hone your skills and practice your ninjutsu and kenjutsu whenever you have the chance to. We shall meet again in our next training session. With that, Naruto and Shin bowed their heads to each other, before the blonde allowed his master to return to Runeterra, Runeterra in a flash of light. After Shin had left, Naruto threw the towel on his shoulder and began to walk out of the training room, which located at the first basement of his new home. He didn't stop there however, and continued to make his way up to the first floor to proceed to the bathroom, grabbing a pair of spare clothes he had prepared beforehand on the table in the living room. From what he had seen on the way, there was an indoor bath in the first basement near the training room but he didn't feel comfortable enough to use it. Walking into the bathroom, Naruto closed the door behind him and turned on the light while taking off his clothes, standing only in a pair of boxers. Before he could remove the last piece of clothing and get anywhere near the shower however, the glass door slid open and came walking out a certain demoness who had blackmailed her way into his house. Her erotic, bombshell of a body was still dripping wet and haloed with steam, but her white hair was already bouncing back to shape. Wow. Naruto was lost for words, not because of seeing Evelyn naked, since he knew she was particularly naked all the time, with what little clothing she usually had was actually shadow conjurations. No, he was surprised because he didn't expect to see her so soon in the morning, after taking a shower like a normal human being no less. Ah, good morning summoner. She greeted him casually and walked toward him in a seductive manner, hand moving out and sliding under his boxer to seize his member, giving it a firm squeeze before he could even regain his composure and react looking good. Been working out? With that said, she gave him a playful wink and took her hand back from his pants before he could grab her wrist and do it himself before making her way out of bathroom, leaving the blonde behind with a what-the-fuck look on his face, not knowing if he should freak out or not. After the door was closed behind him, he could hear Gra Grafia approaching before telling Evelyn to put some clothes she had prepared for her on, obviously not feeling pleased with the demon's antic of walking around particularly naked. Break. This is the first time I have seen you like this, Naruto Kuan. Not even bothering to lift his face up from his table, Naruto just turned his head and glanced up to see Momo standing in front of him with her arms crossing under her ample breasts. It was lunch break, but Naruto hadn't eaten his lunch yet, leaving his bento box on the table. A group of female classmates had dragged Asia to the school's cafeteria to have lunch with them, so as much as she wanted to eat with Naruto, the soft-hearted blonde couldn't really say no to them. Not that Naruto had any problem with it, since he knew that making more friends would be good for her, as it was all that she had ever wanted to begin with, and that he needed some alone time for himself, to gather himself together after everything that had happened to him in less than 24 hours. Here, this is for you. She then uncrossed her arm, revealing an orange-flavored milk carton and placing it down on the table in front of his face. So, what happened? The white-haired girl asked, as she linked a table with his and took her seat on the chair, facing him with a smile. I'm here if you want to talk, about it. She said, pausing a second when Naruto suddenly shot his head up and looked straight at her. And for the next 20 minutes, for the first time in a very long time, not caring who might be listening, Naruto Uzumaki began to vent his fr 
Egypt's frustrations, most of which resolved around a certain sentient ancient horror that did not take any more than a few minutes to become the most annoying person or demon that Naruto had ever met in his life, with how casual she was with her attempts to sexually mess with him and get him to have sex with her, which would no doubt end with him having his throat slit, his eyes gorged out and his balls crushed, just for the fun of it while writing him and gutting him alive. Any man would die to have a woman like Evelyn offer her ass to him the way she did several times just this morning, when she finished dressing up as a maid and started working under Grafia to be useful around the house, but Naruto knew better. He knew he couldn't let his guard down for even a second around her, because the moment he did that, she would get exactly what she wanted and lived up to her reputation as the demon of agony, a being that had terrorized Runeterra for thousands of years. To make matters even worse, Evelyn had even begun to negatively influence Asia like Rius, but at least his master wasn't intentionally doing so with Asia just trying to copy the older girl's habits. With millenniums of experiences in manipulation, it didn't take it much for Evelyn to start telling Asia, the most innocent and oblivious girl in the house, to start doing this and do that she wouldn't do usually, like wearing a shorter skirt for example, and getting rid of her sweater vest just to show off her body more, for what reason Naruto had no idea, but Asia seemed to be keen on following her instructions. While they might look harmless, there was no guarantee that Evelyn wasn't going to make Asia do something that would end up with her getting hurt, hurt, or worse. He had confronted her about this, and while the demon had assured him that she would never try to do such a thing to such a, quoted, harmless pretty little bird like Asia, Naruto wasn't convinced. He might have become a bit paranoid, but he had every reason to be like that when an evil being like Evelyn was around his friends. Oh wow, your day sure has been, eventful. Was the only thing Momo could say after Naruto had finished telling her his story. She had a smile on her face, but inside she was conflicted, not knowing how to properly react after hearing all that. Yeah, you tell me about it. Naruto grumbled in annoyance and then choked down the whole carton of orange flavor milk Momo had given him in one go. I mean seriously, does she even know shame? She's pissing off everyone in the house but Asia, even my parents think she's crazy. At this rate, I think she is going to get kicked out of the house before the end of the week. Maybe you should start doing something about it, Naruto Koen. Momo finally said as Naruto threw the carton of milk over his shoulder and into the trash bin at the corner of the classroom behind him I mean. I know that you have talked to her, but maybe talking isn't the right way when it comes to a 15,000-year-old demon who was given reason to live by the manic vibrations of an agonized world at war, you know. Whoa, look who has been doing her homework. Naruto said in impress, finally grinning a little as he looked at Momo, as she had just quoted a line of Evelyn's lore didn't know that you are that interested in League. When Tsubaki-senpai told me what happened to you at the meeting with the two exorcists yesterday, I decided to do some research on Evelyn. Gotta admit that I was a bit worried for you after I realized she was pure chaotic evil. Momo explained with a smile, making Naruto nod his head in understanding, so can anyone do that to you, or is it only, only her? Actually, it was kinda my fault. I was angry that those two exorcists tried to hurt Asia and unconsciously drew on her power. She seems to be the only one I can do it with though, because she's a demon and her demonic power is pretty similar to us. Kinda like how I was able to utilize the full power of Yon's Azakana demon blade without needing to learn how to use it. Naruto said with a shrug, but if that's the case then I think I can also do the same with other demon champions, but they are not the friendliest of the bunch, and I think making a deal with one of them is more than enough. Speaking of those two exorcists, do you know that Yuto Kuen isn't at school today? Wait, really? Naruto uttered in surprise, his mind wandering back to what Rias had told him the night before. Yeah, it's been the talk of the school since morning. You probably didn't notice. Momo nodded before she leaned forward and asked him in a low tone Sonakaisha told me his problem with the Excaliburs. Do you think that he skips school to go after them himself? Possibly but, the enemy is one of the leaders of the Fallen Angel, he's gonna get himself killed and don't get me started on the two exorcists who carried Excaliburs with them, he looked like he wanted to beat their faces in yesterday. Naruto said as he took out his phone and sent a text to Kiba, asking if he was alright and his whereabouts at the moment. 
After a few seconds, the blonde received a text back from Kiba, who answered that he was all right and also there was no need for Naruto to know his current location, making him scoff quietly under his breath as he turned his phone around and showed Momo the texts okay, so at least we know that he's still alive. With that said, Naruto put his phone away and turned around to grab his backpack, making Momo give him a look of confusion before widening her eyes in realization. Wait, where are you going? The white-haired beauty asked Sona Kaisha told us to stay put. We promised the exorcists that we wouldn't interfere with their business. I know, Bucho told me to do the same, but I can't just stay here and let a friend of mine get himself hurt either. Naruto said as he stood up, throwing his backpack over his shoulder I'm gonna go find him, and when I do, I will beat some sense into him if I must, not because he decided to go after the Excaliburs himself, but because he chose to do it alone without telling anyone. And with that, he made his way out of his class while texting both Rias and Asia about Kiba and what he intended to do. Technically, leaving school it wasn't wrong for him to leave school at this time, since he didn't have class in the afternoon. Naruto Kuen, wait up. When Naruto was at the school gate, he suddenly heard a shout and turned his head around to see Momo running toward him, holding her bag in one hand I'm coming with you. I can't let you go alone. The blonde couldn't help but ask, huh, but don't you have classes this afternoon, Momo-chan? I, wait, how do you know I have classes this afternoon? I have been paying attention, Naruto said with a shrug, making Momo blush a little Monday and Friday are the only times of the week you can't come out to chase me if I try to skip school? Oh oh, is that so? Anyway, if you want to come along, I'm not gonna stop you. Just make sure that you won't get into trouble with Kaicho because of this. This. Naruto then said, turning his attention to his phone when he received a text from Rias, telling him to be careful it looks like Bucho and Akino-san have already sent their familiars out to go look for Kiba as well. Let's go. With that said, the two of them left the school and started their search for Kiba, asking around if anyone had seen him. Since Kiba was one of the more popular boys in town, people would notice him as soon as he appeared in their sights, so it did not take it long for the two of them to find a lead of his whereabouts and start following it. Please give your blessing to these lost lambs. Please bless us in the name of the Father in heaven. Though, before they could find Kiba, Naruto caught sight of two very familiar figures standing in a more crowded district of Kuo Town, asking for charity from the people around them. Their white robes and black bodysuits underneath, not to mention Zenobia's giant covered swords, made them stick out like sore thumbs and was one of the reason people were giving them weird gazes, parents were hushing their children from looking at them, not even bothered to drop even a coin into the charity box that was left on the ground before them. H. How is this possible? Zenobia said drilly as she continued to beg is this the reality of the developed country called Japan? This is why I don't like countries that have so little followers of our beliefs. Don't say that, Zenobia. Irina scoffed quietly as she turned to her partner we lost all the money we had. So, we need the help of these heretics, or else we can't buy food. Ah, we can't even buy a single loaf of bread now. Humph. And all of this because you bought that fake painting. Zenobia said and pointed an accusing finger at the painting of a poorly painted saint next to them. Anyone with a rational mind could say that the painting was fake, and the artist had no skill or whatsoever. What are you saying? This is a painting of a saint. The person at the market told me so. Irina shot back while hugging the painting. Fine. Then tell me, who's this? I think it's... Saint Peter? Don't be ridiculous. This is not Saint Peter. No, it, it's definitely him. I'm sure that much. Ha! Huh. Why must I have this one as my partner? Oh, God. Is this another one of my trials? Zenobia complained about Irina with an exasperated sigh as she ruffled through her hair. Then she returned to berate her partner. Because of this, the Protestants' concept of values differ from those of us Catholics. Show more respect towards the saints. Irina shot back at this. What? It's you Catholics who are still bound to old laws. What did you say, you damned heretic? 
What, you heretic? Grohl. The quarrel between the two exorcists was suddenly put to a stop by the sounds of their hungry stomachs as both of them slumped to their knees. Anyway, let's fill our stomachs for now, otherwise we'll never get back the Excalibur swords. Zenobia said first. You are right. Should we try to rob the pagan's money here? I think God would forgive us about it. Irina replied with her suggestion. Then, as if finding the idea appealing, both exorcists showed mischievous smirks on their faces. I'd say we raid a church. Yeah, and loot out the money box. But wait. Irina suddenly said as if she remembered something important. We can't do that. The last thing we need is dealing with the policeman. Um. Let's drop it, then, Zenovia agreed. Oh, then how about putting up a street performance with our swords to gain funds? Yes, that's more like it. We can cut fruits for attraction. Well, we don't even have any fruits to begin with, so let's cut this painting instead, Zenovia removed her blade and pointed it at the painting Irina just bought. No, you can't do that. Irina protested as she hugged her painting again. Fine. Then let's find the merchant who sold this fake painting and get your money back. I told you, it's not a fake. It's a real painting of St. Paul. Aha. I knew it. So it's not St. Peter, after all. Ahem. Naruto, who had finally had enough of their pointless bickering over a fake as painting, cleared his throat loudly before walking toward them while Momo was apologizing to the people around them and convincing them that there was nothing out of the ordinary here, and that Zenovia and Irina were just two cosplayers mind lowering your sword down. There are civilians around here, you know. A.H. It's the possessed devil. Now that is just rude. Break. Delicious. Japanese food is so delicious. Indeed, it is. The taste of my homeland. Currently, Naruto and Momo, along with the two female exorcists were sitting at a table in a local family restaurant, with Naruto deciding to treat them for lunch as an act of goodwill. The two devils only ordered drinks while they were watching the two exorcists wolf down large amounts of food as if they were nothing but air. After all the food had been finished, Zenobia wiped her mouth and she let out a sigh. Although it's for the sake of carrying out our missions, but to sell our souls to devils like this. And one of them is possessed too. Can you two drop that already? Naruto said in annoyance as he sat with his arms crossed on his chest first, I'm not possessed. My power went out of control, that's all in second, that's not how you thank the person who is going to pay for your meal. Oh well, I guess we do need to express our gratitude, oh lord. Please bless these devils for showing kindness to us. Irina prayed out loud as she held her cross, and as a result, Naruto and Momo both winced in pain as they held their heads. Oops, sorry about that. It was a habit of mine. So, why did you two come to us? Zenovia finally asked after she had finished drinking her water, looking at Naruto with suspicious eyes. Who said I was coming to you? Naruto said absent-mindedly, I was looking for my friend, Kiba Yudo. It appears that he's out looking for the Excaliburs today, by himself, against our master's will. The one who glared at us the whole time during the meeting yesterday, no doubt. Zenovia stated, making Naruto nod his head in confirmation. Our superiors informed us that one of Rias Gremory's servants was the survivor of the Holy Sword Project, was it him? Yes. Zenovia merely replied with a neutral tone, I thought so. I could see the need for vengeance when I looked into his eyes. He wants to destroy the swords, doesn't he? You can say that. Naruto replied with a nod he really hates Excaliburs, and all holy swords in general. It's only natural for him to hold a grudge and want the swords gone. At that, Irina suddenly said, when our superiors assigned us with the mission to retrieve the Excaliburs, they actually want us to prioritize not letting them continue to remain in the hands of the fallen angels. Naruto raised an eyebrow at that, and then an idea came to his mind. So you are saying that it is possible for you two to not retrieve the swords at all, but destroy them if you don't have any other choices? 
the blonde concluded, and Irina nodded her head in confirmation. Zenovia also did the same, albeit a little reluctantly then our goal is one and the same, why don't you enlist our help? We don't want to be suspected to be working with devils, that's all. Zenovia coolly replied, an answer Naruto had expected to hear so he didn't act like he was surprised. However, if you are capable of destroying the swords, then I don't see why we shouldn't get help from you. Now that was something he wanted to hear. He could see it in Zenovia. Zenovia. The girl had been thinking about it, despite the statements she had met during the meeting yesterday. Wait Zenovia, are you sure about this? Irina objected, raising from her seat to voice her disagreement this is the devils we are talking with. Zenovia said finally with a heavy sigh, Irina. To tell you the truth, it would be really difficult to recover the three Excaliburs and fight Cocobiel himself with just the two of us. I am aware of that, but... Our objectives are to find and reach the three stolen Excaliburs, then after that we can choose to either take them back or destroy them. Zenovia pointed out with her arms crossed it would be bad if our Excaliburs are stolen too, so if that happens, then they must be destroyed. What would happen if we don't have the strength to continue if we are beaten? These devils here can do it for us if they believe they are strong enough to do it. It will be our last resort. If it is possible, I don't want to die and wish to return home safely, you see. You should have prepared better, Zenovia. Irina scoffed at her partner's reasoning. Then I've changed my mind. Zenovia said casually, making Naruto and Momo look at her in surprise my faith is flexible, and it can adapt to the best case whenever necessary. At Zenovia's words, Irina furrowed her eyebrows. You know, I always think that your faith is a little strange. I don't mind that. I do believe that accomplishing the mission and coming back safely is another way to prove our faith. Zenovia replied before she turned her head back to look at Naruto, leaving her partner to sit there alone and ponder with her thoughts, so if we are working together, then please make sure that your identities are not revealed. We don't want our superiors to know that we have sold our soul out for more than just foods. You do realize that we don't take soul anymore, right? Momo asked with half-lidded eyes. Then currency it is? Just the destruction of the swords are enough for us this time. Naruto said finally as he took out his phone and sent Kiba a text before dialing Rhea's number, knowing that she would want to personally hear it from him it will also benefit us devils, having some of the strongest holy swords removed from the picture. Our masters won't be able to say no to this deal. Momo-chan, can you keep them company for a minute? Sure, you go on ahead, naruto Cohen. Momo said as Naruto then walked away to call Rias, far enough for some privacy, but close enough to keep them in his sight. So. I heard you were Issei Hayadukuan's childhood friend, Irina San. Drake. So even Bucho has allowed it. I think I understand the situation now. Kiba said with a heavy sigh while drinking some coffee. After he was done talking to Rias about his deal with the two exorcists, Receiving her permission after Rias had had a discussion with Sona and Grafia, Naruto had called Kiba to the restaurant they were at and told him everything that had been going on. To say that the night had been shocked would be an understatement. But you know, I don't feel satisfied about this, getting the permission to destroy the swords from their wielders themselves. Zenobia furrowed her eyebrows at this. What a rude thing to say after we both have agreed to your terms without questions. If you were a stray devil then I would have cut you down at this very moment. Can you? Yudo replied and the two glaring at each other. Naruto just let out a sigh and put his hand down the table and speak up to cool things down. That's enough, you two. We are not here to fight. From this moment on, we are allies who share the same goal, so let not try to kill each other before we can find Cocobiel or the Excaliburs. The pawn looked at the two sword users with his own glare, making Kiba and Zenobia calm down after a second. They still scowled at each other, but they both seemed to agree with Naruto's logic. So, is it true that you're still holding a grudge about the Holy Sword Project? Irina decided to ask, in a considered tone so not to provoke the knight. Yes, I am. Kiba replied in a cold tone. 
you know, for the church, that project is one of their worst cases in our history. Zenobia began the person in charge of the project was labeled as a heretic and was exiled forever, but I have heard rumors of him siding with the fallen angels, and our superiors deducted that he was possibly the one who gave Cocobiel the information he needed to steal the Excaliburs. Is that so? Kiba couldn't help but ask with a thoughtful expression on his face so what's his name? Valper Galilei. He's also branded the genocide archbishop. I see, that's not a name I was expecting to hear after all this time. The knight muttered darkly under his breath, his eyes hardening with determination. At least, now I know who I have to find. Anyway, it's best that we keep in touch. Do you guys have a phone or anything like that? Naruto asked the two exorcists, making them look at each other before shaking their heads. All right then, take this. Naruto then reached into his backpack and pulled out a leaflet with the summoning magic circle of the gremory in the middle. He then put his hand on it and changed the circle to communication, instead use this to keep in touch with us. Just put your hand on the symbol and call us if you are able to find something, and we will also do the same. Same. I see. Zenobia nodded her head as Irina took the leaflet from Naruto, and one from Momo as well from the Citrisside well then, thanks for the meal. I'll make sure to repay this favor of yours in the near future. With that said, the two exorcists finally stood up to take their leaves, walking out of the family restaurant without saying any other words. Naruto Kuen. Hanakai San. After the two female exorcists had left, Kiba finally turned to look at Naruto and Momo who were exchanging each other's phone number why are you doing this? Naruto only snorted as he put his phone back into his pocket, do I actually need a reason to help a friend of mine? Seriously Kiba, I didn't know that you think so little of me. I didn't mean that. It's just, this is my problem and... Naruto shook his head and placed a hand on his comrade's shoulder, telling him with a grin on his face, from the moment that we became servants of Rias Gremory, we are family, Kiba, and family takes care of each other. Do you seriously think that we are going to just sit still and let you run off to fight on your own? I can't understand your feelings right now, Kiba, and I am sorry for that, but what I can do now is helping you out so you won't get yourself killed, and I am sure that Bucho and the others will agree with me. Have a little more faith in your friends, will you? Kiba only remained silent during the entire duration of Naruto's speech before finally, his expression softened, and he let out a smile that seemed to be held back for a very long time. Seriously, Naruto-kun, if you say it like that, then I need to get my things together, don't I? He said I know my true enemy now, but I'd still like to destroy the holy swords if possible, and would love to have you help me with that. You got it. Naruto grinned, not noticing how Momo was looking at him with a so soft smile on her face. Break. And so, for the next few days, the temporal alliance between exorcists and devils began their search for Cocobiel and the Holy Swords, but even with the help of Sona and her servants, flipping the town upside down, Naruto and the others couldn't seem to find them anywhere. Even with the help of Heimerdinger, who had created several tracking devices and had Naruto set them up around town to look for any suspicious and supernatural activities, their search continued to show no result. Grafia had deducted that wherever the cadre and his followers were hiding with the stolen Excaliburs, it was concealed and hidden by a very powerful and advanced cloaking spell similar to the cloth Zenobia had been using to cover her sword, making it almost impossible for them to sense and detect their holy aura. Although, she would surely do the same if she was Cocobiel, since Excalibur's holy aura was among the strongest, and not to mention that fallen angels were beings that could wield holy power themselves. So still no luck today as well? Rias asked as she came to greet Naruto when he returned home that evening welcome back, Naruto. Ah, good evening, Bucho. Naruto smiled at his master while kicking off his shoes where's Evelyn? The blonde blurted out, asking before he could stop himself. The past few days since living in his house, Evelyn had always been the first to greet him whenever he returned home, giving him the same offer over and over whether or not he would like to take a bath, dinner, or her first in a self-modified ultra-skimpy-made outfit that was almost as scant as her regular one. She's in the kitchen making dinner with the others. 
Rias answered as she put her hands on her hips, looking as if she was displeased hate to admit it, but, her foods actually taste a lot better than mine. She's 15,000-year-old, Bucho, must have picked up some cooking skills here and there. Naruto answered as he walked into the house regardless, I'd rather not have to deal with her now. My familiar returned an hour before you, she couldn't find anything either. Rhea said as she followed Naruto into the living room, where the blonde removed his backpack, and then threw himself onto the comfortable sofa what about Zenobia and Irina, did they find anything? Last I heard from them, they were still searching for Cocobeal somewhere in the 7th district. Naruto answered as he turned around and stared up at the ceiling I sent Timo and Tristana to the 4th district to look for some clues, but there's only so much they can do with so many people around. I let them return to Bandle City before I went home. I see. Rias nodded her head and smiled at him. You really have been working hard, Naruto, here. The crimson-haired heiress suddenly said as she took her seat on the sofa a little above him, and took his head in her hands to gently raise him up and lay him down on her laps let rest like this. You deserve this at least. Ah. The blonde was lost for words. He really didn't know what to say. This was his first time resting his head on the lap of a woman that wasn't his mother, so this sure felt very different. Rhea's thighs felt very soft, and she had a smile on her face as she looked down at him while running her hands through his unruly blonde hair. You know, I haven't thanked you for managing to strike the deal with those two exorcists. Rhea said, adding before he could say anything I know that you did it for Kiba, and I guiltily admitted that I wouldn't have tried to do the same. As much I wanted to help him deal with his need for revenge against the Holy Swords, it's a risk I wasn't willing to take. Our enemy will be a cadre of the fallen angels after all. I actually didn't think that far when I struck that deal with Zenobia and Irina, you know, us having to fight him when we find out where he's hiding. Naruto admitted but, if it does come down to that, I won't hesitate to stand against him and fight. I know. Rhea smiled that's why I will stand with. But before she could finish, Naruto saw a blinding flash of light coming from the kitchen, and immediately shot up, having just enough time to grab Rias with both hands and use his own body to shield her from the explosion that sent them flying out of the house, crashing through the wall of the living room and ending up on the ground with rocks and debris dropping around them. Naruto, are you all right? Rias asked worriedly as she looked at the young man on top of her. After a moment, the two managed to pick themselves up. Naruto's right arm and shoulder were bleeding very badly and he had several scratches on the side of his face, but it wasn't something he couldn't handle. Why yeah, I will live. The blonde coughed, waving a hand in front of him to clear the cloud of dirt in front of them w what happened. He uttered in shock and horror, looking at the destroyed living room. After a moment, he could also see a green shield where the kitchen was supposed to be, and widened his eyes when he saw Sona kneeling on the floor next to a sobbing Asia, with her hands holding up, maintaining the shield to protect herself and the others from the falling debris of the house. His mother, meanwhile, was lying unconscious on the floor with Evelyn on top of her. Grafia, however, was nowhere to be seen Ka-chan. Everyone! He shouted worriedly and got up to run into the house, but a dreadful feeling suddenly hit him. Slowly, the blonde turned around and looked up at the sky to see a menacing-looking, smirking man with long black hair, red eyes, and two pointy ears. On his back were five pairs of black feathery wings, and he was dre dressed in a black robe with golden accessories. Greeting, Rias Gremory. The fallen angel said as he smirked down at Rias, who glared up at him hatefully this is the first time we met. Your hair is really beautiful. It kinda remind me of that big brother of you that I hate so much that I want to throw up whenever I remember him. You! Rias growled before asking loudly and fearlessly as Naruto summoned a set of weapons and stood protectively in front of his master, glaring up murderously at the fallen angel on the sky your cocobeal, aren't you? What have you done to Grafia? Oh, don't worry about her, I merely sent her away to somewhere I have prepared specifically for. Even if she manages to break out, she won't be able to make it here in time. Cocobeal answered can't have the silver-haired queen of annihilation poking her nose around when I rape and then kill the little sister of Sirzex Lucifer. 
His words sent a cold chill down Rhea's spine, but she kept her fear well hidden. So, I was your target all along, wasn't it? Rhea asked you stole those Excaliburs to kill me. Oh, don't be so self-centered, heiress of Gremory. You are not my only target. Sona Citri is also someone I will be looking forward to kill. Kokobiel said with a wild smirk but you are correct on one thing, I stole the Excaliburs to kill you. If it weren't for that woman, I would haven't to wait till this night to make my move. The cadre finished and Naruto and Rias could tell that he was referring to Grafia, as she was currently the only one in Kuo that could fight on equal ground against him. Like hell I'm gonna let you do that. Naruto growled you want her, you will have to go through me first. I know. Kokobiel replied with a smirk, but it would be so boring if I struck either of you down right here, so let's have a battle to stir things up, Rias Gremory. He then waved his hand and made a magic circle appear. From it, a person then fell out and Naruto wasted very little time to catch them, who then revealed to be an unconscious and badly beaten Irina Shidu. It's a gift. She discovered my base and attacked, though I wasn't able to get the other one. He finished with a laugh, as if it wasn't something serious. Kokobiel, you know what is going to happen if someone like you try to kill me, right? Rias finally asked as she looked up at Kokobiel. That's right, and that's what I want. Another great war between the three factions. How wonderful that will be. He declared, his wings flaring out let's have a showdown involving the Holy Swords Excaliburs, Rias Gremory, so I can bring heaven to this little fuss of us. Go to the school that you and Leviathan's little sister attend. That place is filled with demonic powers, so it's a good place to unleash the real power of the Excaliburs. Why should we do what you want? Naruto growled as he used little knowledge of healing magic that he knew to heal Irina, since Asia was healing his mother with the help of Sona, while Evelyn seemed to be watching over them give me one good reason I should not just fight you right here and now. Because you can't, little devil. A small fry like you will never stand a chance against me. Kokobiel said confidently before he gestured his hands out that, and my acolytes have also set this whole town on a destructive spell. I only need to give the word. You and other devils might survive, but I can't say the same thing about the humans living in this town. Bastard. Naruto gritted his teeth. So, let's have a war. Serzex Lucifer's little sister, Rias Gremory. Come to your school with your servant, and do not waste my time. I have very little patience. With that said, Kokobiel flew away, disappearing into the night sky without a trace. Naruto, I will contact the others. Rias hurriedly said we're going to school. The school. Yes, Bucho. Naruto nodded his head firmly. A great battle against the leader of the fallen angels was about to begin. Chapter 16 Ria Senpai, we have finished covering the school with a barrier. Unless something disastrous happens, there will be no collateral damage to the surroundings. Your other bishop has also been moved from his room in the old school building to another location. He will be safe. Momo said, as she hurriedly walked toward them and reported the current situation to Rias, who nodded her head in understanding. The entire occult research club were currently gathering in the park located in front of the Kuo Academy. Irina, who had been healed by Asia, had been taken to Akino's home along with Naruto's mother, and they would stay there with Sona and Evelyn watching over and protecting them. After discovering the whole situation through Rias, Sona Citri had brought together every one of the council and had them together a massive magical barrier around the school. It was a measure used to prevent things that happened from being discovered by humans outside, since their opponents would be a cadre of the fallen angels that appeared in the Bible, who was so strong he could easily annihilate the entire region all by himself. Me and my servants will have to continuously use our powers to maintain the barrier to reduce the damage, so you and your servants will be on your own in their Rias. Sona said as she looked toward Kuo Academy with eyes full of fury. Naruto knew that Sona cared about the school more than anyone else, so to know that it could easily be destroyed during the battle would no doubt make her very angry. Thank you, Sona. We will take it from here. Rhea smiled at her childhood friend, 
who then looked back at her and said, Rias, our enemy is a monster with a strength greater than ours. It is not yet too late. We have your brother. I have already informed Oniyasama. Rhea shook her head and said I don't want to cause problems for Oniyasama or my family, especially after everything that happened with the marriage engagement, but this is different. A leader of our enemies has appeared and Graphia has already been taken out, and we can only hope that she's okay and will be able to make it back in time, this is a problem that not even the both of us can solve. She finished, taking a deep breath. Backup will arrive within an hour. They need to take care of this situation diplomatically with Grigori first, since Mao's force would be involved. I see. Sona nodded her head in understanding. One hour. We, the student council, vow to continue to put up barriers by the name of Citri. She said that determinately, and then turned around to leave. Good luck, Naruto Kuen, everyone. Momo said finally before following her master. As a bishop, her talents and magical power was required to maintain the barrier at its strongest state. Now my servants. After the Citri had left, Rias turned her head to look at her servants and began with a strong tone we will be on the offensive. Unlike the battle with Phoenix, this is a battle of life and death, but even so, I will not forgive you if any of you die here. We won't let Cocobiel destroy the town that we love so much, and we will all survive survive so we can keep going to school together. Yes. They answered simultaneously and fearlessly, with Naruto tightening the gaunt of Nazook around his left arm. For Kokobil, he doubted that he would have enough time to decide which weapons that he could use best against him and his followers, so Naruto had already summoned a set that he would use for the entire duration of the fight and improvised from there. Once done, the blonde then activated his watch and saw which champions were available for summoning, before contacting them and explaining the current situation to them, wanting them to be ready. Once done, Naruto promoted to Queen and summoned Yumi, who would stay with Asia and protect her, making sure that she would not get taken down before any of them, as her power to heal even fatal wounds were without question the most valuable. After that, they went straight through the main gate and arrived at the schoolyard, where four holy swords were floating in the middle while releasing a large amount of light and holy aura as a white magic circle spread itself across the school beneath them. A person was currently standing at the center of that circle, having the appearance of a short, bespectacled elderly man with gray hair, a mustache, black eyes, who wore a priest outfit. Valpur. Naruto heard Kiba snarled next to him. So that was Valpur Galilei, the former priest who was the lead researcher of the Holy Sword Project, the one who ordered the execution of Kiba and all of his friends. That magic circle. Valper, what are you trying to accomplish with those swords? Rias asked loudly, looking directly at Valper, who had a smile on his face. What else, I'm going to combine them into one. He said, as if he found the thought amusing. Valper. How much longer will it take for the Excaliburs to merge? Asked a voice in the sky, and everyone looked up to see their most powerful enemy, Cocobiel. He was sitting on a throne-like chair that was floating in the sky, looking down at them while several fallen angels were hovering around him, holding light weapons in their hands as they glared heatedly at the group of devils standing below them. Them. It won't even take five minutes, Cocobiel. Is that so, then I will leave it to you. Kokobil then turned his attention over Rias and her servants, who were glaring at him with hatred, no one more than Naruto. Is Sir Zex coming? Or is it Seraphal? He asked in an amused tone. In the places of Onisama and Leviathan-sama, we. Swish. ben After they heard the sound of something that flew through the air, the gym exploded much to the shock and horror of everyone. Boring, but well that's okay. At least, this will be entertaining. There was a big pillar made of light where the gym was located, which, after looking closely, Naruto could make out the shape of an enormous light spear. So this was the strength of a fallen angel cadre. Now. I will have you all fight my followers and my pet that I brought from hell. Kokobiel clicked his fingers and the ground underneath them started grumbling. A portal then opened on the ground and from there, a creature emerged. 
It was a three-headed dog that was over ten meters tall. It had thick legs matching sets of sharp claws. Each of its head has a pair of red eyes, and there was fire coming out of the mouths that were lined with sharp fangs. Ruawur. The massive monster howled, shaking the entire schoolyard and the buildings. Yikes. A dog. Yumi asked as if she was both pissed and terrified seriously. You summon a mutt. Now I hate that guy even more. It's not just a dog, Yumi. It's the Cerberus. Rhea said with a voice filled with disgust. See Cerberus? Asia asked nervously as she looked at the monster before them. Yes. It's a famous creature that has the nickname of Guard Dog of Hell. Rias answered Asia's shaky question. It lives in the gate to hell, not in the underworld. To think, he will bring something like this to the human's world. Rias bit her thumb while saying it, thinking about a strategy that would allow her and her peerage to take such a monster down while dealing with the group of fallen angels that were about to attack them. Leave this one to me. Naruto said, and took a step forward to place his hand on the ground. He might not be able to summon Aurelian soul, since that prideful dragon had refused his call, but the celestial dragon wasn't the only powerhouse that he had at his disposal. In a flash of blinding light, at the same time as Naruto activating the size controlling runes, a gigantic, humanoid figure covering from head to toe in solid rocks appeared before them, topping the guard dog of hell in size. Slowly but surely, the figure shifted, grinding as every person within Kua watched in astonishment as it opened two deep craters that looked like glowing eyes, and a projecting crag that could be a nose. Dust poured from a curved and jagged chasm that looked horribly like a vast mouth. A face slowly raised up before the hell monster as the entire school rumbling at the movement of Malphite, sharp of the monolith, a magical superweapon that once stood with the almighty mage Nazuk against the might of the void, fully ten feet across and over triple in height. Let's go, Malphite! Naruto shouted as he leaped onto Malphite's shoulder, and the ancient power let out a primal howl that knocked back even Cerberus. Kokobil, seeing the gigantic rock creature before him, stood up from his seat and ordered his fallen angels to start attacking the towering rock creature and its summoner, before raising his hand to summon a second and third Cerberus, seeing that the whole situation had escalated over his expectation. You will. Lose. With a roar, Malphite moved its massive fist and punched the fir first Cerberus away, before reaching its other hand out to grab the other one before it could bite into its arm. Naruto, who stood on top of Malphite's shoulder, activated the gauntlet of Nazuk and started shooting down any fallen angels that bombarded Malphite with a barrage of holy weapons, dodging left and right to avoid the spears and swords that were thrown at him. Snapped out of their shock, Rias and the rest of her servants joined the fight, assisting Malphite in dealing with Cerberus and helping Naruto in guarding him from Kokobil's followers. You, what are you? Kokobil asked as he looked at the blonde-haired devil fighting on top of Malphite, as he snapped his head to him and gave him a fist with a look of determination on his face, before taking out his katana, a demonic katana conjured from a red hanyu-like mask that he wore on the left side of his belt and charging at the fallen angels who had managed to get close enough to Malphite to engage him head-on. With fast movements and flawless techniques, generating cyclones of violent demonic energy along the way while being assisted by Rias, who floated in the air above Malphite unleashing orb after orb of power of destruction, Naruto struck down enemy after enemy with relative ease, going for the killing blows without hesitation, knowing the moment he did so could be his last. One of the Cerberus Malphite was fighting unleashed a wave of hellfire at it, and while Malphite was left unarmed with its rock-solid body, Naruto was forced to retreat to avoid being burned by the fire. It reached him though, but Akino immediately flew down between him and the wave of fire and casted a powerful ice spell, freezing it before it was shattered to pieces by Malphite's movement as it punched Cerberus away, sending it crashing into the old school building. Well, there goes our club room. Naruto said while chuckling nervously before turning over to Akino thank you, Akino-san. You're welcome, Naruto-kun. Akino giggled softly before taking off and rejoining the fight at Rhea's side, helping her force back a group of fallen angel. Down below, Kaneko was holding back a Cerberus on her own, 
using her impressive strength to pull the creature back by its tail before swinging it around and throwing it into the forest. The hell monster quickly regained its balance in midair and charged back at Kaneko, who braced herself. All right, let's go Ari. Naruto said and summoned his trustworthy nine-tailed Gumiho to his side. In a flash, summoner and champion became one, allowing Naruto to run and move his way down Malphite's rocky body with the grace and swiftness of the fox Vastaya while fighting off the fallen with target homing orbs of foxfires, guided and aimed by Ari. Once his feet had touched the ground, Naruto wasted no time to take a leap toward Kaneko, who saw him coming and took a stance with her fist cocking back. Once he was right above her and the Cerberus was right in front of them, they both threw their fists forward and punched the Cerberus with everything they had, landing a twin blow that was so strong they generated a shockwave that the head was completely blown apart before its whole body was sent away. Bucho Rias didn't need any more signal than that to bring down a wave of destructive power she had been gathering, completely annihilating the guard dog of hell from existence. The two remaining Cerberus howled and barked angrily at her, unleashing three pairs of gigantic fireballs at Rias, but Malphite immediately raised its rocky arm and used its own body to shield her from it. Once the series of explosions was over, Malphite swung his arm down and backhanded the two monsters away, sending it crashing into the new school building before sending a gigantic seismic shard after them, blowing them up and destroying an entire section of the new school building. Malphite, yo! I'm grateful that you are fighting with us, but can you please not destroy our school? Naruto shouted at the rock monolith, who looked down at him while making a gesture like it was scratching its head in an apologetic manner. Before the blonde could say anything more, a fourth Cerberus appeared from the darkness much to everyone's shock, and after a howl it charged straight toward Asia. Yumi let out a gasp and wasted no time to jump behind Book as it opened to the final chapter to unleash waves after waves of magic at the charging monster, but there was only so much they could do to slow it down. Naruto instantly turned on his heels and ran after it, only hoping that he could make it. I got it, Naruto Kuen. Kiba said and ran past him, moving at the speed that was worthy of his position as the knight of Rias Gremory. Once he was side by side with the creature, he took a leap to the left, using his sword to cut down one of head of the monster, before a blur shot down from above him and cut down the second one, revealing itself to be none other than Zenobia, wielding Excalibur destruction. I have come to back you up. After saying that to them, Zenobia and Kiba went on slashing towards Cerberus Torso, causing the only head left of it to howl in pain at their devastating assaults and tried to retreat. The blue-haired exorcist didn't give it time to do so, as she got underneath its body and slashed her sword up, unleashing a destructive wave of holy aura that split the monster in half, leaving it to vaporize the same way its head did, just as Naruto, Rias and her other servants finished off the last of the fallen angels, leaving only a number of stray exorcists hiding behind, behind Valper, who had retreated to a barrier created by his underlings to continue his work with the Excalibur, and there. Leaders left. So, Kokobil. Naruto spoke up as he turned around and glared at the cadre, whose arrogant smirk had been completely wiped off of his face feeling entertained yet. I must admit, this summoning power of yours is most unexpected. Kokobil said as he stood up from his seat, smirking widely as he looked down at Naruto, I have heard rumors from the Kyoto Yukai faction that a nine-tailed fox is also in this area, to think that it's also you. With how precious nine-tailed foxes are to them, it appears that if I kill you all here, not just the three factions, but even the Yukai world shall be plunged into the chaos of war. Yeah, you're welcome to try. Naruto said before shouting Malphite. The sharp of the monolith let out a roar before throwing its fist at Kokobil, who merely smirked and raised one arm to stop at mid-swing much to their shock. He then created a massive light spear above his head and sent it down toward Malphite who was too slow to move and got impaled through the chest by it before being forced onto his back, causing an earthquake that almost sent everyone off of their feet. Malphite, while still alive after that, was immobilized entirely on the ground, and even with both hands it could not pull the spear out of its chest. Shit. Naruto cursed when he looked up and saw countless spears like that formed on the sky, all of which pointed directly down at Malphite. Malphite go back to Runeterra, Malphite.
In a flash, Malphite disappeared from the schoolyard, leaving only the spear on the ground. Cocobiel's smirk widened and he raised his hand to bring the light weapons down, blowing up a good portion of the schoolyard and forcing Naruto and the occult research club on the defensive ground, using everything they had to protect themselves and each other from the attack. It's complete. Suddenly, Valper called, turning everyone's attention to him the four Excaliburs are going to become one. As he said that, the Excaliburs that were placed in the center of the school field started giving out incredible amounts of light that spread throughout the area. Because of its brightness, the devils had to create a special barrier to protect themselves from it, with Naruto using the Shield of Daybreak to protect both himself, Kaneko and Asia from the light. After a moment, when the bright light was gone, there was one holy sword at the center of the field giving out a blue-white aura. Because of the light created by the Excalibur when it turned into one, the spell on the ground is also complete. This town will collapse within 20 minutes. The magic circle spread around the whole school field, and it started glowing and gathering power. Don't joke with me. Naruto shouted as he threw the entire shield at the barrier Valper was currently hiding behind, leaving a huge crack on it you really think that we are going to stand here and let you do that? Then kill me if you want to end the spell, boy. Kokobiel spoke up victoriously as he flared out his wings and took off from his seat, leaving it to fall down and land on the schoolyard. You ask for it, bastard. Naruto gritted his teeth in anger and unmerged with Ari to do it with Anivia, summoning a huge snowstorm that spread over the entire school and caused ice to form before launching him himself at Kokobiel, engaging him head-on with the assist of Ari, Rias and Akino. Down below, using the crack that Naruto had left on the barrier that Valper was hiding behind, Kiba smashed it to piece with a barrier-disposing sword and the help of Zenobia, causing the former priest to send out his stray exorcists while retreating to the back nervously. Kiba Yuto Zenobia said as she struck down a stray exorcist with Excalibur destruction if the cooperation is still valid, let us destroy that Excalibur together. Is it okay? Zenobia merely laughed at Kiba's words. At worst, it won't be a problem if I collect the fragments of the Excalibur that is acting as the core of it. Since it's in the hands of these exiled priests, it's no longer a holy sword. It is a sword of heresy. I see. Kiba nodded his head in understanding before turning back to the group of approaching stray exorcists, but make sure you don't get caught in my way. Funny, because I'm about to say the same thing. And with that, the two charged at the enemies together, fighting with two different techniques, but leading to the same result. With Kiba, it was the fast and swift, but lethal strikes, while Zenovia was all about powerful and devastating blows, which either left a crater on the ground, or cleaved an enemy into two when combined with the destructive power of her Excalibur. Like that, it did not take it long for them to reduce the number of stray exorcists down to one, who appeared to be their leader, and was assigned by Valper to wield the combined Excalibur to fight them. Remember me, Valper? Kiba asked, his tone low and dangerous as he stood side by side with Zenovia, while glaring daggers at Valper. Who are you, boy? He asked. I am a survivor of your holy sword project. Kiba growled as he took a stance, facing the wielder of Excalibur with Zenobia no. I am the one who was killed by you to be more precise. I have continued living by being reincarnated into a devil. Kiba said, his eyes were ignited with flames of hatred. Ho! Oh. So, you are the survivor of that project. Valper said this is such a misfortune. To meet you in a far east country like this. I feel fate. Foo foo foo. The strayed archbishop laughed and waved his hand. The stray exorcist shot forward, activating his Excalibur's powers to fight both Kiba and Zenobia, but both sword wielders were able to counter them by walking alongside each other. You're the one in charge of that project. Kiba said in a low tone as he clashed sword with the stray exorcist for a second before pushing him back so that Zenobia could fight him head on tell me why someone like you was put in charge of it. Valper merely smirked as he answered the question in amused tone, you see. I like holy swords. I like them so much that they come out in my dreams. Possibly because my heart was fascinated by the legend of Excalibur since I was a child. 
That's why when I found out that I can't use Excalibur, I went into despair. I held admiration for those who can wield it because I couldn't. That feeling became so powerful that I started an experiment to create those who can use them. Then it was complete. It's thanks to you and the others. What? Complete? You disposed of us after declaring us to be failures. Kiba shouted, pointing a finger at Valper. The archbishop merely shook his head before answering with a dark expression expression on his face, no, it was all thank to you that I realized that there was an essential factor needed to wield holy swords. So I used the numerical value of the factors to investigate its capability. Most of the test subjects had the elements, but they didn't have the numerical value needed to wield the Excalibur. Then I reached a conclusion. Is there a way to take out the elements and gather them? I see. I understand now. The thing that is put inside the holy sword wielders when they received a blessing is. After pushing the stray exorcists and his clones back, Zenobia stopped and turned to look at Valper while gritting her teeth hatefully. That's right. We take out the holy elements from those who have them and crystallize them. Just like this. Valper then took out something from his robe that was giving out light. It was a shiny, teardrop-shaped crystal. With this, the research on holy sword wielders improved. Even so, those fools from the church banished me for heresy and took away my reports on the research. By looking at you, I see that the project was succeeded by someone. That Michael. He made me look like a criminal and this is the result? Well, it's that angel we are talking about. Even if he takes the elements out from the test subjects, he wouldn't go as far as to kill them. That part only would make him more human than me. Cuckoo cuckoo. Valper laughed pleasantly. I see. You killed my comrades and took out the elements needed to wield the holy swords? Kiba asked Valper with his voice filled with killing intent. That's right. This very orb is from back then. Kiba felt his blood turn cold at Valper Galilei's words. You. How many lives have you sacrificed for your greed and experiments? H.M. If you say that, then I will give this orb to you. My research has reached the stage where it is possible to mass-produce them in the right environment. First of all, I will destroy this town with Cocobiel. Next, I will gather the legendary holy swords stored around the world. Then I will mass-produce holy sword wielders and start a war against Michael, and the Vatican with the combined force of holy weapons. I'm going to show the result of my research to those foolish angels and their followers who have convicted me. With that said, Valper then threw away the orb as if he had lost interest in it. It rolled on the ground and went to stop at Kiba's foot. The young knight then bent down silently and picked it up. He patted the orb sadly, lovingly, and dearly. Everyone there was a tear on Kiba's cheek. His expression was filled with sadness and anger. Then it happened. The orb that Kiba held started giving out lights, but eventually it started to spread and cover the whole school, engulfing it in a soft blue light. The light then gathered into many spots and took shapes, the shape of people, boys and girls whose bodies were made of blue-white lights as they stood around Kiba. I see. Kokobil said as he sent Naruto crashing into the ground with a palm to his chest. All three girls who had been assisting him had wounds on their bodies, while Kokobil and Naruto were left unscratched, but it was only because he had the healing power of a phoenix. The various powers that are present here have made the spirits within the orbs appear. This is most amusing. The spirits then looked at Kiba with a dear and sad expression. Everyone. Ay ay. Naruto heard his friend say as he crawled out of the crater and looked at the spirits around Kiba, realizing that they must be his friends, the other victims of the Holy Sword Project who had given it their all so that he could escape. I have always, always thought about it. Was it all right that I was the only one that survived? There were those who had more dreams than me. There were those who wanted to live more than me. Is it all right that I am the only one to have a peaceful life? The spirit, the spirit of a boy then smiled as he shook his head, don't worry about us anymore. You are alive at least. 
More and more tears fell from Kiba's eyes as he looked at them in surprise. Then the spirits of boys and girls started to move their lips in a rhythm, singing a song. It's, it's the sacred song. Asia mumbled while putting her hand together with a sad smile. Kiba had started to sing as well while shedding tears. When they were going through the painful experiment, the song had been the only thing that allowed them to keep their hopes and dreams. It was the only support they had to continue living. Their bodies started to glow blue-white. Those lights were getting brighter, with Kiba in the center. We were no good alone. We didn't have enough elements to wield the holy swords. But. It will be okay if we are together. You have to accept the holy sword. It's not scary. Even if God is watching. Our hearts are always. 1. The spirits then took off and then turned into a pure light that fell down to Kiba, who stood there with a small smile on his face. Valper Galilei. He then said, the smile disappeared from his face as he turned his head to look at the former archbishop as long as I don't kill you, there will be those who would suffer the same fate as us. Humph. It's been said for a long time that research always comes with sacrifices. Haven't you realized that yet? But Kiba ignored him and held up his hand. Please respond to my feelings now. Sword rebirth. He shouted in from the space between his hands, holy and demonic aura started emerging and formed into a single sword balance breaker sword of the betrayer. You shall receive the power of this sword that has both the power of light and demonic powers with your own body, body. As Kiba held the sword with one hand, he shot forward. If that was the true Excalibur, then I could not have won against it. But that Excalibur cannot cut the feelings of me and my comrades. With that, he clashed swords with the Excalibur's wielder. Much to everyone's amazement, the new sword was able to withstand the cutting power of the fused Excalibur. Growling, the stray leader pushed Kiba back with everything he had, sending the sword in the air before using the power of Excalibur mimic and rapidly at the same time, splitting the tip of his sword at the tip started to come at Kiba with god speed. It accurately tried to pierce Kiba from every direction, but he dodged it with lightning fast movements of a knight. Kiba. Naruto shouted as he took off and grabbed the sword in midair, at the same time summoning a large hammer that looked like an anvil that radiated divine power of fire. The enhancement wouldn't last as long and nowhere near as powerful as what Orn could do, but it should give Kiba more than enough firepower to counter even the like of Excalibur use this. With that said, he smashed the hammer into Kiba's sword of betrayer and sent it back to him. Thank you, Naruto Kuen. He shouted and caught the sword, feeling the power radiate from it even more so than before with a reddish, flame-like aura surrounding the blade. Zenovia, let's destroy the sword. Very well then. Zenovia, who dropped Excalibur and held out her right hand, started chanting Saint Peter. Saint Basil the Great. Saint Denis. Holy Mother Mary. Please hear my voice. The space beside her got distorted, allowing the blue-haired girl to put her hand in the middle of it, and then pulled out a uniquely shaped broadsword with a blue blade and a golden edge. The sword had a semicircular guard on the left side of the handle that extends to the bottom just above the pommel, pommel, with a small extension on the right side of the handle. Standing from the tip of the blade, the sword was slightly taller than Zenobia, surpassing the latter's height by just a few centimeters. In the names of the saints who reside within this blade, I will release it. Durandal. Durandal. You are not the wielder of the Excalibur. Not just Valper, even Cocobiel couldn't hide his astonishment. That's where you're wrong, Valper. I was the wielder of Durandal. I was also chosen as the holder of the Excalibur. That's all. Zenovia made a stance with Durandal. After learning the truth about the true ability of Excalibur's users, do you think that I still see the right for myself to continue to use it? She asked. Absurd. According to my research, we haven't reached the stage where someone can wield Durandal. Of course. Even in the Vatican, they haven't made someone who can wield Durandal artificially. Then why? 
Unlike those common artificial holy sword wielders like Irina, I'm a natural born wielder. Valper became speechless at her words. Durandal is a sword that ravages beyond what people can imagine. It cuts anything it touches. It doesn't even listen to me most of the time. That's why I have to keep it in another dimension, otherwise, it would be dangerous. Even I, the holder, have a hard time with it. Don't die in a single strike, okay? At least use the Excalibur to its fullest. With that, that said, the Durandal wielder shot forward and struck Excalibur with a devastating blow, cancelling its ability and forcing it wielder back. Kiba, seeing an opening, attacked him from the side with his sword igniting, radiating a vast amount of divine flame that was enhanced into the blade by the hammer of the Freljordian demigod of craftsmanship and forging, Orn, alias the fire below the mountain. The stray leader only had enough time to use the sword to block his strike, but the result was something no one could have expected, as Excalibur shattered into pieces, and its wielder being thrown back and annihilated in a wave of flame. And no, my Excaliburs. Valper collapsed to his knees in shock before he turned to look at Kiba's sword. The fire enhancement had disappeared, returning the holy demonic sword to its former state Ho, holy demonic sword. Impossible. The polar opposite of two things cannot merge. Valper Galilei made a shock expression as he fell back. Valper Galilei. Prepare yourself. Kiba said as he took steps forward. I see. I understand now. Holy and demonic. It will be an explanation if the beings that represent the two become unbalanced. Then not only the Mao but God has also. But before he could say it, a spear of light pierced through Valper's chest, causing the former archbishop to go down after throwing a solid amount of blood. Valper. You were remarkable. The reason you went up to that conclusion proves that. But, I don't mind whether you are with me or not. I could have done it by myself from the beginning. Cocobiel said with a sneer before he landed on the ground before them with an overwhelming pressure. Now devils. He laughed confidently and fearlessly give me your best shot, let's see what you can do by combining your strength together. Are you looking down on us? Rias asked heatedly don't joke around. Around. Joke around, ha ha ha. Cocobiel laughed loudly in amusement you are the ones who are kidding. Do you think you can defeat me? Well, isn't that obvious? You think that we would come here if we didn't believe in winning? Naruto asked before continuing on with a smirk, looking back at Cocobiel's blood-red eyes fearlessly even though the fallen angel was unleashing a terrifying and overwhelming presence you must be very stupid or straight up an idiot to ask such a question. Bark all you want, little devil, that's all you are good for. So he was tilt-proof, noted, Naruto thought in his mind as he tried to figure out how to take down Cocobiel in less than 20 minutes. Aurelian's soul, of course, was the most viable option, but he had already exhausted himself with three consecutive summonings to the point he doubted he had enough magic power left to summon a being like him. Not to mention that the dragon didn't want to be summoned to begin with. But it might be worth a try, maybe, just maybe, if he could draw on a small portion of Aurelian Soul's celestial power like how he did it with Evelyn, then. We will take him down together, Naruto Kuen. Kiba, who seemed to have realized what Naruto intended to do, spoke up as he held up his holy demonic sword you're not alone in this fight. You are silver, senpai. Kaneko spoke in her monotone as she walked to his side with Rias and the rest of her peerage, so don't try to carry the fight all by yourself. Seriously, Kaneko-chan. Naruto said with a nervous chuckle, before reconjuring re Yon's Azakana blade as the first one had been destroyed in his earlier battle against the Kadre, giving him the basic idea of how strong a name from the Bible was. Hey you! Zenobia spoke to Naruto can you increase the power of my sword like what you did earlier to his holy demonic sword? Yeah, I can do that. But would it work against a monster like Kokobiel? Naruto had no idea, but there's no point in not trying. Alright, we do this together everyone. Rhea said as she began to gather her demonic power let hit him with everything we got, and show him that it's not wise to look down on us Grimory. 
Yes, with that said, Akino began to gather her magical power alongside their master, causing the winds to pick up as two powerful aura of lightning and power of destruction flared powerfully around them. Ari also went into her nine-tailed fox mode, causing eight more tails to appear behind her as her eyes glowed with the same color as her fox fire. Resummoning Orn's hammer, Naruto enhanced Kiba's holy demonic sword and Zenobia's Durandal with the divine flame of the forge god before doing the same thing to Kaneko's gloves, giving the little girl some extra power in her next attacks. Don't forget about me that easily, summoner. You are. It would be a crime if I were excluded from a fight against a black wing, so summon me, summoner, if you still have enough strength to do so. Heh, you can count on it. Naruto smirked and allowed Enidia to retreat. Though, we will have a conversation about Black Wing later, considering that your sister is one herself. Whatever. Just so you know, because you are a devil our nature will conflict with each other. It will take you a while to fully adapt to my power after we merge, so tell your friends to buy you as much time as they can. You seem awfully informed? Wanna tell me why? Naruto couldn't help but ask. Just shut up and do what I tell you to. All right, I think I can defeat him, but I need time. Naruto suddenly said, making his friends turn over to look at him by me as much time as you you all can. But no more than 15 minutes, Naruto thought. They were running out of time, fast. All right, you heard him. Rhea said. She knew that now wasn't the place and the time for questions. If Naruto, who then retreated to the back and closed his eyes in a standing mediate posture that had been taught to him by Shun, wanted her and everyone to buy time for him, then they would do it to the best of their abilities. Let's go. With that said, Rias unleashed the full might of demonic power she had been building up inside her. Fohahaha. Good. That flow of demonic power. You truly have the talents equal to that of your brother, Rias Gremory the fallen angel leader laughed while looking at Rias' aura of demonic power as if he was truly enjoying it. His expression was colored in ecstasy. Blow away a away. From her hands, Rias released the largest, most powerful orb of demonic power she had ever created, shaking the school and covering the whole area in the power of destruction as it came straight at Cocobiel, annihilating everything in its path. However, he didn't even bother moving an inch of his body to dodge, and raised both of his hands with the intention to block it. Interesting. Interesting indeed, Mao's sister. He said while gathering the power of light and took Rias' demonic power head on. Much to everyone's shock, Rias' wave of demonic power got pushed back and began to lose its shape. However, it's not like Cocobiel wasn't uninjured. His black robe was tattered in places and the flesh of his hands was torn apart by her demonic power. Lightning At the moment when Cocobiel was about to deflect the orb of destruction with his palm, Akino sent the lightning towards Cocobiel who was concentrating on blocking Rhea's attack. But her lightning dissipated with a single movement of Cocobiel's wings. So, you have decided to stand in my way. The one who inherited her power from Baraquil. Do not put me in the same group as him. Akino widened her eyes and became enraged, unleashing even more lightning magic at Cocobiel, but they all ended with the same result, being deflected by flaps of the cadre's black wings. For you to become a devil. Ha ha ha. You have pleasant servants, Rias Gremory. The leftover of the Holy Sword Project who reached Balance Breaker. And the daughter of Baraquil. You have weird tastes, just like your brother. I I won't forgive you for insulting my brother, Armao. Rhea said in anger as she got up with Akino's help more than that, the insults you made to my servants will require your life. Then try to destroy me. Mao's sister. Crimson-haired ruined princess. The one whom you are up against is someone who has been an archenemy of the devil since a long time ago. If you don't see this as a chance, then your reputation will be looked down on. Cocobiel laughed with his nose at Rhea's anger and said provokingly. Zenobia and Kiba charged at Cocobiel with their flame-infused swords. After deflecting Rhea's orbs of destruction, Cocobiel dodged their strikes, sending Kiba away with a punch in the gut. 
Zenobia then jumped into the air and brought her sword down as hard as she could. The ten-winged fallen angel then created a sword of powerful holy light with his hand and blocked her, with so much ease her eyes widened in shock. Humph! Durandalha? Indeed, it is so much stronger than I remember, thanks to the enhancement that Kid has put on it. Coca Cocobil emitted an air wave from his other hand and made Zenobia's body float before kicking her in the stomach girl. It doesn't matter how powerful your sword is, you can't cut me if you don't have the skills for it. It all depends on the wielder. Zenobia flew back with an anguished cry, but she quickly adjusted her stance in the air and landed on the ground. She then went on slashing towards him once again with Kiba Yuto at her side, unleashing wave after wave of empowered strikes at Kokobil, but there was little that they could do to Kokobil, who was so much faster than both of them and also way, way more powerful. Ho! Oh. Attacks at the same time from an empowered holy sword and holy demonic sword. Interesting. Good indeed. Come. You can't defeat me unless you do that much. Kokobil created another sword of light with his other hand and clashed with the two sword wielders, taking them on in a sword clash as if they were nothing. After a moment, the smirk on his face widened and he sent them away with the twin slashes of his light swords, generating a vast amount of light energy that forced both Kiba and Zenobia to block with their weapons, but even so they could feel the intense power and force behind Kokobil's unleashed attack. There! Kaneko, seeing an opening, shot toward Kokobil from behind with her gloved hand engulfing in divine fire. But being a rook, her speed was only above average, so Kokobil could see her coming at him from miles away. His black wings then turned into sharp blades and tried to cut her, but a white blur that caused Kokobil to widen his eyes in shock grabbed Kaneko and took her out of harm's way before the blades could hit. What? He asked in shock fully turning around to look at a figure with six wings of white feathers on his back, holding Kaneko in his arms as he slowly turned his head around to look at his enemy, revealing himself to be none other than Naruto Uzumaki, whose hair was now almost white. Senpai, this is. Kaneko uttered in amazement as Naruto put her down. Kale, the righteous. Naruto said with his trademark grin as he stood up, his wings flapping behind him as he took off and hovered a few inches above the ground. Well, that was faster than I have expected but. He then opened his hand and created a sword that's smoldering with celestial fire, virtue before turning around to look at Kokobil. Who am I to complain? With that said, Naruto shot toward Kokobil, his sword leaving a trail of light in the air before the devil-slash-angel hybrid swung it and clashed his sword with the still-shocked fallen angel, shattering his sword of light and sending him back with a violent shockwave. It did not take it long for Kokobil to come to a conclusion, after everything he had seen so far. With a hateful look on his face, he looked at the white-winged devil and snarled. I see, so because the balance has been broken not just a sacred gear that allows its user to create weapons with demonic and holy attributes exists, but even a devil can wield the power of an angel. What the hell are you even babbling about, Kokobil? Naruto asked as he split virtue into two separated swords, isn't it a bit too soon to say your, la your last words? You have no idea what is going on in this world, brat. Kokobil snarled do you even know why a trash devil like you can wield the power of an angel? And that brat over there can create a holy demonic weapon, when two attributes so polar opposite shouldn't be able to combine in the first place. He then finished that's because not just the original Mao, but also God, is dead. Everyone was shocked and couldn't believe what he just said. It's normal for devils like you to not know about it, even the little sister of Mao like you Rias Gremory. Who can say that God has died? Kokobil snickered as if he found the thought amusing humans are an incomplete bunch. Without God, they cannot control their hearts and obey the laws, you know? Even us, the fallen angels, and devils couldn't tell this to those below us. Even among the three powers, only the people at the top and certain people know about it. Though it seems Valper realized it earlier. He explained with a wide smirk on his face. After the war, what was left were the angels who had lost their leader, 
the devils that lost their Mao and the majority of high-class devils and the fallen angels who lost most of their people apart from the leaders, so it wasn't just an exhausted state. All of the factions fell so low that they had to rely on humans to continue their generations. Especially the angels and fallen angels that could only continue their generation by mating with humans. Fallen angels can increase if the angels fall, but pure angels can't increase their numbers after losing God. Even pure-blooded devils are rare these days, right? Lies, it's a lie. Zenovia muttered as she started losing the will to fight. The truth is that another big war wouldn't happen unless you do it on purpose. After all, the three factions fell to hell in the past war. Everyone, everyone decided that it was meaningless to continue having a war if the start of it all, God and the Mao were dead. Even that bastard Azazel declared that there is no second war after losing the majority of his men in the war. It's so hard to bear. It truly is hard to accept it. To lower your gun once you already shot it. Don't fuck around. If we continued on from there, we could have won. Even so, he. Is there any value in fallen angels who can only live by inviting humans who possess sacred gears? Cocobiel declared his argument strongly, for the first time expressing nothing but rage on his face. The real truth left a much harder impact on them so much more than they had thought. Asia was covering her mouth with her hands, her eyes opening wide and her whole body was shaking as Yumi and Ari were both trying to comfort her. Even if she had become a devil, her belief in God had never once wavered. God doesn't exist anymore? God is dead? Then the love we were given by him is. Asia stuttered with tears falling from her eyes. Cocobiel answered Asia's doubt with a laugh. That's right. It's normal that there is no love from God and no divine protection from him. God is gone already. Michael is certainly doing well. He's taking the place of God and is taking care of the angels and humans. Well, if the system used by God is operating, then the prayer to God, the blessing of God and exorcism would function. But if you compare it to the time God was present, the number of believers decreased. That holy demonic sword brat over there was able to create the holy demonic sword because the balance between God and the Ma broke. In reality, holy and demonic powers cannot merge. If the ones who to rule the power of holy and demonic powers, God and the Ma, disappear, then lots of unique phenomena occur. Hearing Cocobiel's words, Asia dropped onto the ground with her eyes lifeless. She would have collapsed if Ari didn't catch her. Asia. Yumi shouted worriedly as she jumped down from book and stood before her pull yourself together, Asia. From here on out, I will start a war. I will take your heads as a gift. Even if it's only me, I will continue from where we left off. I'm going to show Sirzex and Michael that we, the fallen angels, are the ultimate beings. Don't fucking mess around. Naruto, who had finally had enough, cried as he slashed his swords horizontally and sent a wave of starfire at Cocobiel, forcing him to dodge it don't even think that I am going to let you destroy this town or hurt my family, my comrades and my friends. With that said, Naruto attacked, conjuring numerous sword of holy fire from his wings that flew toward Cocobiel forcing to block and parry without stopping before he was slashed in the chest by Naruto, who then spun around and kicked him in the head with a dragon's rage kick, sending him into a nearby building. Kokobil emerged only a split second later, unscratched, and attacked Naruto with a light spear, forcing him to cross his blade to block it before generating a shield of holy fire around him to avoid being slashed by the Kadre's black feathers that he turned into sharp blades and flung them at Naruto. Growing in frustration, Kokobiel created a massive light spear on the sky and brought it down upon Naruto, but he suddenly split himself into two separate beings, one was himself, and the other a white hair woman wearing light golden armor, and had the six angel wings on her back, holding in her hand the one single virtue holy sword in her hand. Just before Kokobiel could decide which one to attack, possibly kill with a light weapon, Ari, Akino and Rias bombarded him with a barrage of magical and demonic power, forcing the cadre to use his wings to shield himself from their attacks. As their magic attacks abruptly came to an end, Zenobia and Kiba took their chance and went in, 
using the last enhancements on their swords to break down Kokobiel's defense and slash into his torso, pushing him back with Kiba finishing off by throwing the sword at him. The fallen angel caught the weapon with a hand, but Kaneko was waiting for it and punched the hilt of the sword, causing it to impale through his chest, making him roar out in pain. Naruto, who quickly turned himself around, unleashed a tremendous amount of his demonic power with Yon's Azakana Katana at his side, generating a whirlwind of dark energy from a circle around his body and causing a red demon mask to manifest on the upper half of his face before dashing toward Kokobiel while channeling his demonic power into his demon blade. The Fallen was ready for it, but Kale suddenly appeared on the other side and together, Summoner and Champion slashed their swords at the cadre in an X formation, dealing heavily damage to his body with the combination of holy fire and demonic power. We can do this. Kiba said as he and his friends made a stand around the bloody fallen angel we can really defeat him. Do not let your guard down everyone. Rias shouted. Like everyone else but Naruto, the crimson-haired heiress was at her limit, but she refused to give up, not after they had pushed Kokobiel, an enemy from the Bible itself, to this point he's not finished yet. Then let's make sure that he's not gonna got back up again. I got this. Naruto declared and dashed forward, his whole body glowing an ethereal aura, as he summoned and switched between sets of weapons, not pausing for even a second as he used literally everything that he had in his disposal. The fallen angel let out a roar of anger and tried to attack the blonde, but he dodged all of his light weapons and took a small leap to put his foot on the fallen angel's shoulder, using it as a leverage to push himself into the air before throwing a smoke bomb into Kokobiel's face, generating a dark cloud of smoke that he then disappeared into leaving Kokobiel with a look of confusion in his face whenever Naruto emerged and attacked him with one of his close-range weapons before quickly submerging back into the smoke, making the Kadre's counterattacks miss entirely. Once the cloud of smoke dispersed, Kokobiel finally found Naruto, but even before he could conjure one of his light weapon, the blonde had already fired three consecutive shots from Jin's full sniper rifle, hitting him in the chest and shoulder before finishing with the empowered fourth shot, blasting off his arm as he tried to dodge it. Rias and Akino, seeing their chance, went in with their gathered magic and demonic power, blasting Kokobiel across the school and toward Kale, who had been waiting for the fallen angel and caught him with her hands gripping his wings firmly. What ugly color! The righteous said, before she tore off a pair of black wings from Kokobiel's back, causing the cadre to roar in pain and try to attack her in blind rage, only for Naruto to appear right before him with a knee thrust, slamming him into the wall of a building. He then shot his hand out to the side to catch the fully empowered virtue, which was thrown to him by Kale, and stabbed it into Kokobiel's chest. This is for my mother, you son of a bitch. Naruto roared. Gah. He cried, before Naruto ignited virtue, while pushing the sword fur further and further into the cadre's chest, pinning him firmly against the building while burning his flesh from the inside. After a while, the blonde yanked his sword back and sent a powerful uppercut into the cadre's jaw, knocking him into the air before dropping lifelessly onto the ground. Is, is he dead? Was the only thing Zenobia could ask to break the silence, breathing harshly while holding onto her holy sword to stand. Kokobiel wasn't moving, but Naruto could see that he was still breathing, so he raised his sword up and prepared for the finishing strike. Oh well, I wouldn't do that if I were you. The blonde snapped his head around and looked up along with everyone else to see a figure clad in pure white armor standing in the air above them, with five glowing orbs on their breastplates, two more on their knees and another pair on the back of their gauntlets, each of which shaped like that of a dragon, like the two energy wings on their back. You are Albion, the vanishing dragon. The armored cladded man introduced himself I'm with Azazel and here to retrieve Kokobiel, but it seems that you have him taken care of. I see. Naruto said and looked toward Rias for advice. She paused for a second, with a thoughtful look on her face, before the crimson-haired princess nodded her head. Seeing that, Naruto finally stepped back from Kokobiel, allowing Albion to fly down and pick him up. After throwing the cadre on his shoulder, Albion turned around and gave Naruto a nod of acknowledgement, before flaring out his wings and taking off, disappearing into the night sky. Everyone was astonished and speechless by the outcome that none of them could have predicted, 
but when the magic circle that had been spreading across the hole disappeared, they knew that the fight was over, allowing Rias and her servants to breath out a sigh of relief, but the same thing could not be said for Asia and Zenobia, the two who had the belief placed in God. Seeing that his friend still looked somewhat shaken up, the blonde decided to walk over and comfort her, but he was stopped by Kale, who hovered down above him and spoke to him with her arms crossing on her chest. I have heard rumors about you, summoner. The angel said in a calm tone. Only good things, I hope. Naruto said, folding his hands behind his head. Yes, and also bad things, like how you allow an ancient demon to live with you in your house. Kale said, giving him the look of judgment and Naruto knew that she was referring to Evelyn I know that you open your home to your champions, but do not forget who she is and what she has done. I won't. Naruto nodded his head and gave Kale a blank look. This was the very reason he didn't try to summon her, even though she wasn't an evil champion. So can I go talk to my friend now? He asked, gesturing his hand to Asia, who was standing with Rias, Akino and Ari, with Yumi floating above them. With that said, Kale disappeared in a flash of light and returned to her homeworld in Runeterra, allowing Naruto to continue walking toward his friend. That's it for this reading. Hit like and subscribe for a free ticket pass going to the different worlds of anime fanfictions. Looking forward to having you on board again.